Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. In uh, today's video, we're going to learn uh, SFRs. SFR stands for Special Function Registers. So there are 21 SFRs in 8051. They are special function registers. The name itself gives you an idea. Now they are different from the general registers. You know there is R0 to R7, 8 registers in one bank. Like this there are 4 banks. So there are 32 general purpose registers. R0 to R7, 4 times. They are also registers. They are used by the programmer just for storing ordinary values. Okay? That's your registers. They are the tools used for programming. So they are called general purpose. Other than that, there are 21 registers also available to the programmer, but they are not used for storing ordinary values. They have some special use. If you want me to give you the whole list, I can give you right now. A, B, P, S, W. A and B are used for storing uh, values during a program. A is the accumulator. B is used for multiply, divide. P, S, W is the flag register. P0, P1, P2, P3 are the port latches. S, P, the stack pointer. D, P, H, and D, D, P, L form. D, P, T are the data pointer. T, con, T, mod are used for programming timers. T, L, 0, T, H, 0, T, L, 1, T, H, 1 are used to hold the count for timers. I, E, and I, P are used for enabling interrupts and deciding their priorities. S, con is used to program the serial port. S, buff is used to hold data during serial communication. PCON is used to decide the power saving mode with the idle mode or power down mode. That's it. Those are the 21 SFRs. But no, there's no point looking at their whole list. That, that's just news reading. You'd never, you'll understand these SFRs as and when you learn the topics. I'm sure by now you know the use of A and B if you've seen the architecture. You know PSW, I've got a whole video on it. You know Stack Pointer, which we saw in the previous video, that is the structure of internal RAM. DPDR is data pointer that again was covered in the architecture. So you know these registers and P0, P1, P2, P3 are the port latches. They are used to hold value on the ports. The remaining SFRs you learn as you learn the topics. When you learn timers, you learn six SFRs. In serial port, you learn two. In interrupts, you learn two. And in power saving, you learn one. So that's how you learn all the 21. But anyway, my point over here is there are 21 SFRs. They are available to the programmer. Programmer means you. Okay? Now, some of them have very interesting names. So there is an SFR called TCON, stands for timer control. There is something called PCON, stands for power control. There is something called SCON, stands for serial control, and so on. Now, since these registers are available to the programmer, you, that is the programmer, you will use them in some or the other instruction. That's the meaning of saying that they are available to the programmer. So when you write move A comma TCON, your intention is to take the value of TCON into A register. Just you want to know what you have given, what is there in TCON, you want to read the register. Similarly, move A comma PCON, similarly move A comma SCON. Like this, since there are 21 SFRs, there will be numerous instructions like this. <laughs> Every register causes a different opcode. When opcodes are formed, you know what is an opcode, the binary code of this instruction. There will be an opcode for move A comma TCON. There will be an opcode for move A comma PCON. An opcode for move A comma SCON. That means there will be 21 opcodes because there are 21 SFRs. 21 opcodes for what? For move. 21 opcodes for add. 21 opcodes for subtract. Like this, they will run out of opcodes. There aren't so many opcodes that you keep giving 21 opcodes to every instruction. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are 21 SFRs. But as you use registers, they also increase the number of opcodes. So somebody came up with this brilliant idea. See how intelligent people are. We are studying this. We imagine the IQ level of people who come up with this. What a groundbreaking idea out of the box. Let's allot SFRs addresses. Do not confuse. I just said let's allot SFRs addresses. SFRs are not memory. SFRs are registers. Till now you thought memory have addresses, which is correct. Memory locations have addresses. SFRs are independent registers present inside the architecture. But to reduce the number of opcodes consumed, every SFR is allotted an address. So let's say TCON has an address 90. I'm just giving random numbers, okay? TCON has an address 87. SCON has an address 85, etc. So this instruction becomes move A comma 90, move A comma 87, move A comma 85. Now there is an opcode only for move A. A number is never a part of an opcode. 
a number is written as an operand so this is the opcode this is the operand this is the opcode this is the operand which means all your 21 sfrs can be used by using only one opcode the opcode is for move a the operand the sfr is given as an address which means as an operand so everybody who learns ad51 knows that sfrs are given addresses because it's written in every textbook very few students really understand why they are given addresses they are given addresses to reduce the number of opcodes are you clear now another point when you give sfrs an address that address cannot be just any address it should not clash with other memories because otherwise to solve one problem you are creating another problem look here these are all memories of ad51 that's internal rom external rom external ram and internal ram now roms use 16 bit address external ram external ram external ram uses 16 bit address internal ram uses 8 bit address so sfrs are allotted 8 bit addresses because if you allot them 16 bit address you will have to manage the clash with all these memories so that would be too much of a problem so sfrs are allotted 8 bit address so the only clash you have to avoid is the clash with internal ram now internal ram uses 8 bit address but very strangely it has addresses only from 00 to 7f an 8 bit number can actually have a range from 00 to ff do you understand this 00 to ff are 256 numbers internal ram strangely is of only 128 bytes consuming addresses 00 to 7f which means there is a whole lot of addresses 80 to ff which are totally free they are unused addresses they are not used by any memory at all all memories of 8051 are there on the board the roms use 16 bit address the external ram uses 16 bit address internal ram uses 8 bit address nobody uses addresses 80 to ff what do you think it's a coincidence you think they just realized this this all the memories and realized oh my god there is a set of addresses free no this is all a part of the plan this is how 8051 is designed it's a masterpiece of a chip the way it has been created there's so much intelligence born inside internal ram they purposely kept it of size 128 bytes i'm sure you all would be the moment you heard this number for the first time this is our fifth video or sixth video of 8051 in the very first introduction i had said 8051 has 128 bytes internal ram then when you hear this number for the very first time it causes an itch in your minds in your body some very it, it can't be 128 is such a stupid number to use if they could have just kept it as 256 bytes purposely they also had the temptation to keep a 256 byte but no they had control they kept the one internal ram of size 128 bytes so that you have a whole range from 80 to ff which are completely unused addresses and can be allotted to the sfrs so that they do not increase the number of opcodes so here there are two things that you understood first sfrs are allotted addresses second they are allotted addresses which don't clash with anybody so sfrs are allotted addresses from the range 80 to ff did you understand this do not misunderstand students come up with their own concept of this oh that means the internal ram is 128 bytes the first the uh, 256 bytes the first 128 are visible to us the next 128 are not visible usme se out of that some location the sfrs no no i never say sfrs are not any physical continuation of internal ram this is internal ram these are sfrs scattered all over the chip they are just allotted addresses so that they don't create opcodes when you write an address it becomes an operand it becomes separate from the opcode so it does not increase the number of opcodes used so you can access all your 21 sfrs without adding 21 opcodes for every instruction tell me did you understand this now there is something more to understand okay there is something more even more interesting look here so port 0 is also an sfr its address is 80 okay we almost done with this small thing port 0 is address is 80 so when you write move i hope you can see this move a comma p0 this is assembly language when you write it it is written like this when the assembler converts this into machine language there will be an opcode for move a there is no opcode for move a comma p0 because then there would be an opcode for move a comma p1 p2 p3 like this there will be 21 opcodes this is the whole reason 
why SFRs are allotted addresses. So for move A, assembler will substitute its top port. For port 0, assembler will substitute 80 as the address. Please tell me, did you understand this much? So port 0's address is 80. Now, again, if you've seen the second video of 8051, I have given you a detailed description of all the pins. In that, you will know port 0 has 8 pins like every other port. All pins are bit addressable, which means you can access every line of port 0 individually without affecting the other line. Okay, it's a very useful feature. Now, so if you want to make this bit 1, you write an instruction like set D. Clear will make it 0, set D will make it 1. Set D P0.0 .0 will make this bit 1. Similarly, if you want to make this bit 1, you write set D P0.1. If you want to make this last bit 1, you write set D P0.7. So what did you understand? What's the problem? Come on, come on, there is a problem over here, come on. If you understood whatever I've been talking, you should realize again, there is one perennial, perennial problem all over 8051. What? Opcodes. Look at this instruction. This is assembly language. When you convert this into machine language, the assembler will substitute an opcode. Will there be an opcode for set BP 0, 0.0? Nah, there can't be. Because then there will be an opcode for set BP 0 0.1. There will be another opcode for set BP 0 0.2. Like this, there will be how many opcodes? 8. No, not 8. 32 because there are four such ports and each port has eight lines and all eight lines of all ports are bit addressable. That means there are 32 lines. So there will be 32 of ports for set B, 32 of ports for clear, 32 of ports for complement. Can't be. There are not so many of ports that you want distributing 32 of ports for every instruction. So what does this mean? You want this bit addressable feature. You want to access these bits individually, but you don't want to create a separate of port for each one of them. So what do you do? The same trick. Even these bits are allotted addresses. Listen, okay? It's a little delicate. These bits are also allotted addresses. Okay? What addresses are these? These are not byte addresses. These are bit addresses. Okay? They are allotted bit addresses. Now, you know in the internal RAM, I hope you've seen the video before this, the structure of internal RAM. There is bit gen, gen, there are register banks. There is general purpose area, there is a bit addressable area which has bits which can be accessed individually. There are 128 bits having addresses 00 to 7f. 00 to 7f. Again notice something very strange. So strange but so wonderful. The bit addressable area has 128 bits not 256 bits. Since it has 128 bits, the bit addresses used are again only from 00 to 7f, again giving you 80 to ff free as bit addresses. Internal RAM uses addresses 00 to 7f, giving you 80 to ff free as byte addresses. So 80 to ff are free as byte addresses also, 80 to ff are free as bit addresses also. SFRs are allotted byte addresses and their bits are allotted bit addresses. So port 0 has a byte address 80 and port 0's bits have bit addresses 80 to 87. So what does that mean? If I do a byte operation, a byte operation like a move or an add or a subtract etc. A byte operation at 80, it will affect the whole port 0. But if I do a bit operation like set bp 0.0, that will also happen at 80. But since it is a bit operation, it will affect only P0.0. Please tell me, did you understand this? When I write move A comma P0, assembler substitutes 80 for port 0. When I write set B P0.0, assembler again substitutes 80. But there is a difference between this 80 and this 80. This 80 means the whole port 0. This 80 means bit location port 0.0. How do we know which 80 we are talking about? The instruction clearly indicates this is a byte operation, this is a bit operation. That's it. That's what I wanted you to know about SFRs. In detail, you'll be learning the SFRs in the respective topics. So, what did I make you understand so far? There are 21 SFRs. SFRs are available to the programmer. As you use them, you'll be writing them in instructions. When you write them in instructions, they create opcodes. Because for every, as the register changes, the opcode changes. You cannot afford 21 opcodes. So, you write the name of the SFR for the sake of convenience. The assembler will substitute an address for every SFR. So every SFR is allotted an address. The addresses should not clash with any memory. 
internal RAM is of size 128 bytes, so it uses addresses only up to 7F. 802FF are freely allotted to the SFRs. Similarly, in the internal RAM, there is a bit addressable area which uses bit addresses again only from 00 to 7F. So even in terms of bit addresses, 802FF are free and they are allotted to the bits of all the SFRs. That's it. That's what I wanted you to know. So this is the introduction, the idea of SFRs that I wanted you to have. You'll be seeing most of these SFRs like TCON, TMOD, SCON, IE, IP, uh, PCON, PSW already have seen. The others you'll be seeing as we do the respective topics. Okay, see ya.